Well, Pope Francis has released the document, the exhortation. And a lot of people are celebrating in the streets and shooting their pistoles in the sky because it doesn't have women deacons in it and it doesn't have married priests, very probati. And so the day is saved. And yeah, I guess that's a good thing. But we just walked out of a synod where they worshipped Mother Earth Pacha idols in the Vatican, in the Vatican Gardens, in another church. And this document, if you read the whole thing carefully, there's a lot to be concerned about here and a lot of cheesy stuff about the veins of Mother Earth bleeding and monkeys and all kinds of things. So I'm here today with Timothy Flanders. Timothy, how are you? I'm doing great. Praise Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus doing, brother? Christ. Ave Maria. I'm great. I'm doing great. Um, we'll begin with our, our father. And then uh, I think Timothy will just work through this document. Obviously, we're not going to go through the whole thing. It's pretty long All right. as our m modern papal documents. But I want to do some of the highlights. And then I want to share some of the things that I'm alarmed about. And I'm sure you got some things too, right? Sure. You, do you think this was a... <clears throat> a win and a victory or do you think we got some problems here i mean i think it's mixed i think yes we can celebrate the fact that we didn't get a carte blanche on you know all, all the married priesthood but then again we kind of did i think what we need to what we need to touch on here is the amazonian right mm. which was that was yes in a footnote Watch for the footnotes, people. It says over 50 years have passed and we have f and we still have far to go along these lines. Footnote. Oh, so the Pope's saying we have a, we have far to go. What does he mean? Go down to footnote 120. During the sentence, there was a proposal to develop an Amazonian right. So he's saying we now need to create new rights. Novus Ordo was not enough. We need a Novus Novus Ordo. Yep. So, I mean, to for all the issues that we have with the Novus Ordo, again, valid mass, you know, confers grace and everything. But the there is, and, and even with all the abuses, there is at least a book of rubrics in the Novus Ordo that, <laughs> you know, you're supposed to follow, right. even though supposed many people to. don't. But there is at least a book of rules, and it is standardized for all the Novus Ordo, y'all supposed to follow the rules. So what what are what is the potential for completely decentralizing the the even the Novus Ordo liturgy? So it's it's not even we've already got all these abuses and then we're just gonna sort of make up things even more. And this was happening way way more in the sixties and seventies and it got reined in a little bit. I mean, does he wanna just release that again so that we're just going to go wherever we want to now with mm -hmm. Amazonian right. They do have a Zaire right, and I don't know much about that, um, but I think that they did approve Yeah, they recently Zaire performed right. it at uh, St. Peter's, I believe. Okay. And I don't know, yeah, I don't know much about that. I don't, but, know, I don't know much about um, it either. I just saw the pictures. I haven't seen the text of the Zaire right, but there were so, photos of it. Yeah. So, and they, I remember actually just... Um, passing notice because you, you were talking about the biography of Lefebvre in your last video mm. and he mentions how he was Lefebvre was in Africa and they had a pan-African mass and the Africans just loved the Latin yeah, because they loved it because they had so many different tribal languages between them even within a certain country that maybe spoke French dominantly but that was still the French language and they had all these other languages in their separate tribes, but then they all came together and they could all sing this Latin together. And they loved it because he points out how Pius XII had actually given permission for an vernacular, but they didn't even want to do they didn't it. Want it. The Africans were, they just loved this Latin because it was so uniting over these different tribes. And that's exactly why the European church, the Western Latin church retained this because they were tribal. They had all these different tribal French, German, whatever, mm -hmm. even before those national languages kind of coalesced and that that Latin was so unifying and they experienced that the Africans did. Um, so that's where this enculturation is. I mean, and, it, and you can you can see the same say the same thing about the Amazon. I mean, how many different tribes and different languages are we talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, so, it's, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I know a Nigerian guy. He's, 
really super Catholic trad and he was telling me about the history of it and his people were evangelized by the Holy Ghost Fathers. That's what uh, Archbishop Lefebvre was the was the apostolic the delegate is it no what's his name anyway I can't remember the, the title he had but he was the the head guy over the Holy Ghost Fathers in this region and you know it was the fact that these people came in and they 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 started learning their catechism and they started learning Latin and they learned to chant the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei and tribes came together and they would have pontifical masses and all this great stuff. Then after the council, they came in and they said, no, you're going to do it in your language and you need to beat on this drum. <laughs> and there's, there's kind of this, this first world, they're meaning well, but there's a racism involved in it. There's the idea that, well, you're an African or you're an Amazonian, so Gregorian chant will not appeal to you. You need to beat on a drum. You probably remember this quote where he says, um, paragraph 74, he is present in a glory, you're talking about our Lord Christ. He is present in a glorious and mysterious way in the river, the trees, the fish, and the wind. As the Lord who reigns in creation without ever losing his transfigured wounds, while in the Eucharist he takes up the elements of this world and confers on all things the meaning of the Paschal gift. That just kind of struck me as very Tay Hard. I, there is oh, a yeah. way that we could probably work this over to sound, to mean something orthodox, but what I don't like about it is it's one sentence all run together. And it seems to me, Tim, that he's conflating the presence of God as efficient cause, as actor in creation, you know, on the river, the trees, the fish, and the wind with the Eucharistic presence. And that that is very Tehar. Am I reading into that? Yeah, I, that's that's exactly what he, in fact, and Ratzinger, to his shame, does quote this very thing in Spirit on the Liturgy, and he, mm -hmm. and he discusses how there's this cosmic omega point where the whole earth is becoming the Eucharist, and that's exactly what Taylor Chet said, and that's what that's exactly what you yep. quoted. Is this? Um, I mean, I wanted to point out when we were just like talking about the recklessness of this language. Um, like you, when you, when you talk to Ryan Grant, he made mention of the censure that's known as offensive to pious ears. Mm. And that censure meant that this was not an overtly heretical thing because like you said, we could turn it to an orthodox meaning, but it's offensive to pious ears because it's so reckless in its wording that it can be quickly turned towards heresy if anyone wanted to. And mm -hmm. so the popes in the past would actually condemn certain phrases as offensive to pious ears and not to be said for that yes. reason, because they understood original sin and the enemies of the church. They had a sober view of these things and they could see that this is quickly turned towards evil. And that's, I mean, and I think that's, that's what really answers so many of the conservative uh, critics of the trad movement where they say, well, this can all be no. This can all be uh, interpreted in an orthodox sense. Yes, I'm. Yes, and I'm glad it can. Uh, but the issue is that it can also be turned the other way, and that itself is the subject of a condemnation in the past. They used to condemn even that. 